Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is George Kimber. I am the Governor of the Havelock North High School Monetary Policy Team. My colleagues today are Sarah Fagan, Richard Stringer, Kate Hensman and Fabian Faze. Um, I shall begin today by briefly outlining our monetary policy decision. I shall then comment on the current economic situation in which we find ourselves. I shall relate this to inflationary expectations and finally link this back to the rationale behind our main decision. Given the current economic situation in which New Zealand finds itself, the need to promote economic growth and the ultimately tenuous recovery in which New Zealand is experiencing, we believe it is most prudent for the Reserve Bank to maintain its current OCR level of 2.5%. This may be primarily related to the current economic environment in which we find ourselves. New Zealand is recovering from one of the worst economic downturns it has experienced since the 1930s. This period was marred by relatively high levels of unemployment and relatively stunted levels of growth. However, despite entering a recovery phase, the New Zealand economy is still on a very tenuous footing with both producer and consumer confidence at relatively low levels. It should also be noted that this is a negative situation experienced by many other developed economies around the world today, with very few of them actually experiencing strong levels of growth in the current situation. Um, the business cycle to your right would indicate how we reached a relatively low trough of economic activity in 2008 and 2009. Aggregate demand has a significant impact on inflationary pressures in New Zealand, specifically demand pull inflation. Currently, consumption remains at relatively subdued levels, experiencing only a small 0.4% increase since the last recording period. This relatively low level of consumption may be attributed foremost to reduced consumer confidence, which itself is being, um, has come about as a consequence of a relatively weak or stable housing market, ago a net change in the wealth effect, and also relatively um, pessimistic job outlooks and payment securities for um, households. In relation to investment, we've actually seen a decrease of 1.3% since the last recording period. This decrease may be attributed to a shift in the priorities of producers, particularly dairy farmers, who instead of using profits for the purpose of investment, the purpose of capital purchase and expansion of productive capacity, are instead using said profits for the purpose of repaying debts that were accumulated during the recession. This repayment of debts is obviously having a negative influence on the overall investment statistic for New Zealand. In the recent um, budget of this year, the government announced its intention to return to fiscal surplus in the 2014-2015 fiscal years. To achieve this, they announced a zero budget, essentially a net operating balance. However, despite this, government expenditure still remains relatively high, up 1.2%. This may be attributed to the relatively high levels of investment and particularly infrastructure investment and other forms of expenditure that are characterised by a recovery phase used to reboot and restart the economy, so to speak. However, the forerunner of the New Zealand recovery and really the, um, and really the standard to which the recovery is set has been achieved through export earnings. High global commodity prices, particularly for Resort for raw materials such as dairy products that New Zealand specialises in has given rise to high export receipts earned by the New Zealand export sector. Furthermore, a relatively low New Zealand dollar relative to that of Australia, our major trading partner, has also um, increased these export earnings situation. This heightened level of export receipts has given rise to an increase in net exports which has given placed upward pressure on um, aggregate demand. However, overall, we must consider that because both consumption and investment constitute the majority of aggregate demand-based economic activity, the overall effect on aggregate demand, in spite of exports, has been relatively subdued. Therefore, there is relatively little demand pull inflationary pressures since the last recording period. In relation to the current situation, New Zealand has also faced a range and myriad of economic shocks. On a domestic front, we of course have the in, um, ongoing instability in Christchurch. The earthquakes that have struck the Canterbury region have given rise, as one would anticipate, to significantly reduced economic activity and very pessimistic producer and consumer confidence. Although this is expected to increase somewhat in the, over the medium term, something I will stress later, the current situation is that, the, is that economic activity will not reach pre-earthquake levels for some time yet. We also need to consider public indebtedness as an ongoing domestic issue. 
The government has um, stated its concern to return to fiscal stimulus in order to remove the requirements that it currently has of spending $300 million per week on the funding of interest payments on public debt. This situation is something that monetary policy must consider and must also take into account to not conflict with in the interest of national economic growth. On an international stage, we also have the ongoing situation in the Middle East, which the instability and civil conflict in this region gives rise to a very bearish oil, uh, oil market, which in turn gives rise to, very, um, to an increase in oil prices due to insecurity in the region, which, if persistent, may affect not just headline inflation, but also core inflation, the basis of monetary policy decisions. And finally, we have climate change, an ongoing issue for many global economies, including New Zealand, that adds additional regulatory and overall cost of production to firms. This may further heighten and increase prices across the economy and give rise to inflationary pressures. Therefore, in relation to these current economic situation, we can make extrapolations and predictions as to future inflationary expectations. The short-term outlook is that headline inflation Inflation, as shown in the graph, will be relatively high. The graph indicates a 4.5% increase since the last recording period. However, this may be attributed primarily due to the increase in GST and the addition of an emissions trading scheme last year. These two headline spikes should, be, should not be observed by monetary policy decisions and, as only first-round effects, should not be considered as persistent rises in the general price level. However, core inflation, the basis of much of the decisions we make that must be made with monetary policy remains within the one to three percent target range on average over the medium term established by the PTA. Consequently, it would be imprudent for monetary policy to make any drastic changes given that short term inflationary pressures are expected to remain relatively subdued and um, of not a major concern. We then, with regards, however, to medium term inflationary pressures. Growth in the New Zealand economy, which is expected and projected to increase over the medium term, further supported by reconstruction efforts in Christchurch through investment and a subsequent increase in aggregate demand, will place upward pressure on the price level and give rise to demand pull inflation in the future, as shown by the shift right of the aggregate demand curve in this graph. However, this medium term outlook also relies foremost on economic growth predictions, which still say that there may well be very stunted and potentially very um, slow levels of growth over the next six to 12 month period. However, future monetary policy must be acknowledge the fact that medium term inflation is expected to increase in the latter stage of the medium term period. Um, in relation to these expectations, I'd now like to briefly discuss the rationale behind our OCR decision. As previously stated, we believe the OCR should be maintained at its current level of 2.5%. This is primarily reflective of the relatively pessimistic situation of the New Zealand economy, with low confidence and relatively low growth. Currently, it would be imprudent for the Reserve Bank to unduly, unduly tighten monetary policy, which could deter future economic activity and give rise to the feared double-dip recession. Therefore, it will be to take a conservative role in the current situation and maintain the OCR to be um, observed and then to make any necessary changes that are required based on the affirmation of the projections that are currently made for economic growth. And in relation to those future decisions, in maintaining the OCR at its current level today, we acknowledge that an increase in the OCR, a tightening monetary policy, will be prudent in the relatively near future so as to so as to accommodate for the increase in growth that is anticipated, again further perpetuated by the reconstruction efforts in Christchurch. The increase in growth that is expected, however, is not yet shown in the data available, and it, we must, the Reserve Bank must still wait to have predictions affirmed from this data before it makes any decisions related to monetary policy in the fear of it making premature and ultimately unreasoned decisions. Therefore, in summary, given the currently tenuous nature of New Zealand's economic recovery, and in light of the fact that Christchurch and other economic stocks still have significant downward pressure on the overall price level, it is most prudent for the Reserve Bank to maintain OCR at its current level of 2.5% so as not to deter economic growth or further stunt consumer confidence. 
However, we also acknowledge that an increase and in tightening monetary policy will be prudent in the relatively near future, providing that growth projections remain within those expected. However, conservative monetary policy through the maintaining of the OCR is the most prudent decision the situation as it stands today. Thank you. Great, thank you for that presentation. Uh, so we have 20 minutes of question and answer time now. Uh, if you could please make sure um, that you speak up so that the microphones can pick it up. Um, and also as before, if you could discuss the answer amongst yourselves first and then if someone could just bring it back together and give us a final answer, that would be great. Okay, so my question, um, the trade weighted index has been high recently. What are some of the implications of having a high exchange rate? Okay. Well, obviously, obviously the exchange rate has significant influences on the export and import sector yes. and obviously yeah. the level of exports and imports. With, especially with the commodity prices being quite high at the moment mm. and our mm. New Zealand dollars appreciated, mm -hmm. um, but not relatively low compared to the Australian, which yeah. is our major trading partner. And a high exchange rate also favours importers, for example, which yes. is good for consumers because they can get cheaper products. Yeah. But it's yeah. bad for domestic producers as they um, might more be out here yeah, because yeah. more competitive prices from overseas producers. Yeah, so yeah. the local producers. Might so, be might so, relative be to yeah. so relative to Australia, we're relatively low, but relative to other nations, we are mm. relatively high, high which yeah. benefits yes. importers but is detrimental to exporters. Yeah, uh, capital goods mm. machinery is will be cheaper to import, yeah. so domestic producers may import now and invest in that way, while the I price suppose. is low or more affordable for them to Especially do so. Especially as the New Zealand economy is looking into growth in the future. Yeah, yeah. particularly with Christchurch import as well now. and mm. reconstruction efforts. Yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so essentially the implications of the exchange rate, currently New Zealand is experiencing a relatively high exchange rate relative to most other developed economies, which is beneficial for importers, particularly at the current situation in which New Zealand is looking for the import of capital goods to stimulate growth um, and investment within the economy. However, relative to Australia, our dollar is relatively low, which again benefits New Zealand as Australia is our major trading partner we may export our goods to Australia at a re earning relatively higher export receipts, which, as mentioned in our presentation, will stimulate <coughs> um, net export earnings and give rise to aggregate demand. And as exports are the forerunner of our recovery, that's an essential that that continues into the future. Right. Um, just to follow up to that, what tools could the Reserve Bank use to perhaps lower the exchange rate? Mm. Well, it depends if it's over the medium term with the OCR, so... Yeah, yeah the OCR is sure definitely... Because the exchange rate is influenced somewhat by the level of investment in yes. New Zealand. And if, for example, yeah, we have right. high, for example, if we have high OCR in New Zealand, that means our interest rates will be high. And they already are high compared to yeah. other nations in the world. Yep. So that yeah. would mean that foreign investors might invest their money into New Zealand. That's important for New Zealand with yes. our debt levels. <coughs> and demand, yeah, and demand for the New Zealand dollar, dollar, dollar would give it rise push it up to an appreciation. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Which we try to. They can increase the supply of New Zealand dollars because that yeah. will oh. depreciate the New Zealand dollar. And they would yeah, do that yeah, by, for yeah. example, buying overseas currency, and therefore supplying New Zealand dollar to the foreign exchange market. Yeah, yeah. really good. Okay, which would you want to? Um, they will. They can, in the short term, they can by uh, increase the supply of New Zealand dollars and that will decrease the exchange rate, the, depreciate the exchange rate. And what did you say about the long OCR. term? OCR. OCR. Uh, Carefully. Increase it or decrease it? Increase it to encourage investment. Encourage um, investment by increase. An increase in OCR would encourage that investment. Would the exchange yeah, which would encourage dollar. investment, which would in appreciate the dollar if needed. But the so we'd want to decrease. Yeah, we can drive either. Well, wouldn't we want to decrease the to um, depreciate the to depreciate the New Zealand dollar? dollar? Yeah, because it's would, quite high. If we wanted to, Reserve Bank may depreciate the dollar for increasing the supply of New Zealand dollars. But if it wished to appreciate the dollar so as to further benefit importers, it could do this through an increase in the OCR, which would heighten um, interest rates within New Zealand, encouraging foreign investment and thereby giving rise to greater demand for New Zealand dollar and thereby appreciating it. And how would they 
depreciate and how would they we depreciate <laughs> it using the OCR? Mm. Well, we could have low <coughs> OCR, which would mean that our interest rates would drop and our New Zealand would become less um, attractive as an investment country. So less foreign investment means less demand for New Zealand dollar. Therefore, the exchange rate would drop. Well, not drop, but fall. Okay, can you explain why the Reserve Bank has a target for inflation of between 1% and 3%? Right. Okay, well, it, yeah, it, it can't go below 1% because then it would be getting, it's getting too close inflation. to inflation. Yeah. Going to downward spiral, Stagnant growth, so yes. people delay consumption. Yes, and they would wait for something <laughs> to become cheaper and then they will not consume and will fall into aggregate demand yeah, and such. Yeah, which is worse. Yeah. So Firms we, would have to yeah. lower their prices mm. um, to try and, and they would keep get into a spiral to cause to maybe wage inflation then. So low, yeah, yeah, for sure. so low inflation is definitely the desired outcome, given that low inflation is preferable certainly to deflation. So the 1-3% to 3 provides a buffer so against deflationary pressure. Yeah, Any but not shocks. too high. Yeah, and also not too <coughs> high because rampant mm. inflation is obviously detrimental. Mm. Mm. And if the inflation is too high, it becomes hard for businesses to make um, decisions about future and investments. Future, yeah, yeah. And then it may Promotes delay investment yeah. plans distorts, 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 distorts pricing in the market, yes. Yeah, and it can also good. lead to wage pressures. Yes. If the inflation gets too high, yes, workers demand, demand higher higher wages. Yes, we could do a dangerous wage. Spiral yeah. wage inflation. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Sarah, That's good. Sarah, okay. So <laughs> um, the Reserve Bank keeping monetary policy between 1% to 3%, um, we wouldn't want it to be below 1% because you'd be getting into danger area of going into deflation your pressures, which could result in um, a downward spiral, maybe wage price spirals, and you wouldn't want to go higher than 3% because you'd get into more inflation um, businesses would not be confident to make um, investment into future decisions because they would be afraid of inflation, things like that. Yet. Yeah. Now you noticed in your pr you noted in your presentation <coughs> yeah. that you think that in interest rates might have to rise in the near future, but not now. But right now we're well above our target range, so why not go now? Just a shock, isn't it? The, it's, yeah, the headline. GDP. It would be responding to a one-off shock. You've got to yeah. look through them. Yeah. 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 So through it's this. just headlining inflation. Yeah. And, and conflict. And because if we would hide them now, <coughs> it might um, scare off, you know, investors. Not investors, such, but them um, businesses that want to now invest into their business and yeah. start the economy again slowly. They might yeah. and not do this yeah. because of the, for example, high borrowing lengths. Borrowing mm -hmm. rates. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. Sure. yeah, we don't want to stunt growth too early. Yeah. So it's over the medium term. Essentially, at the moment, PTO. yeah, the PTO establishes over the medium term. Yeah. And the high headline inflation we have at the moment is mm -hmm. primarily due to these, you know, economic shocks, GST and ETS. Right. And rather than using the OCR, which would be a very, you know, rash and potentially damaging thing, the Reserve Bank can simply use moral suasion to assure people that this is right. only a one-off shock and mm -hmm. it, you know, will not cause persistent increase. Yeah, so, yeah that would be fine. So uh, the Reserve Bank that we do not want to increase the interest rates slash OCR right now because businesses which are now recovering from the recession we just had, they are looking forward in the future for investment and if we would increase it right now, they might be um, scared off by the hair borrowing lens. So, we would, stunt, we would further stunt growth and we might be in the danger of a double dip recession, which we do not want to get into. <coughs> and also, um, what was it, in the future, if Headline we increase in the future, we get in business have recovered more easily. And, and in the medium, and exactly, in the PTA mm. it says that we have to look for the medium term and this, the, the OCR, not OCR, the CPI right now is so high because of the one-off shocks such as GST, GST and maybe oil prices and the crisis in the Middle East. So we have to look through this and just concentrate on core inflation, <coughs> as said in the PTA. Okay, One more question on inflation. How does very high inflation actually damage an economy? Can you think of some examples? Is Zimbabwe. Is like a, is like a <laughs> um, That's well, wage inflation. Yeah. Having high levels of inflation, That's firstly, gives rise, I think, to instability and unpredictability, unpredictability which reduces scale, confidence. Yeah. And, uh, so mm. that's, yeah. I think, an overarching yeah. theme that would predominate an economy with high inflation, and that reduces confidence. Mm. Consumers I think, yeah. and producers, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I think our two <coughs> main points in for dangers of high inflation are investment predictions, are uh, hard for business to invest, and wage inflation, which we are the spiral yeah, of the wages. Sure. Also, yeah, the loss of purchasing power of yes. money, yes. Yeah. So nice. people, particularly on fixed incomes, mm. will oh, be nice. really affected negatively by 
high inflation. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Is, <coughs> doesn't it all relate to um, we want to reduce our debts? Does it have to do with infl inflation? Um, will mean higher. Yeah, for sure. We I will be forced to export high inflation to our overseas trading partners, which of course will be detrimental to our exports. Yes, so it would actually well. decrease our export receipts. And redistributes income unevenly. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, among so the it just, yeah, it just really, the material standard of living decrease. overarching will decrease, essentially. If our domestic mm -hmm. inflation is higher than our trading partners' inflation, that means their goods are more price competitive on our market. Right. So yeah. Especially our exports. domestic producers <coughs> can be yeah. uh, undercut by more yeah. affordable yeah. overseas competition. Yeah. Makes sense, yeah. So, so um, the high inflation rate would mean that producers wouldn't feel very confident and so they wouldn't really invest because they wouldn't know what's going to happen in the future and um, wage inflation could occur because people with the higher prices, they'd want to demand a higher wage. Um, and also the, oh, the price of overseas, their imports would be more competitive over here and it would be worse for our domestic producers. Good, excellent. Okay, so net migration has been decreasing recently, <coughs> so that means more New Zealanders are heading overseas. What are some of the implications of this for the New Zealand economy? Okay. Right. Right. Well, yeah, they'd so be um, <coughs> transferring their New Zealand dollars into other currencies, wouldn't they? Yeah, but I think Depends. foremost, if there's less people in the economy, you're going to have Perfect a decrease in economic activity. Yeah, we have a decreased labour force. Oh, for sure. Decreased yeah. consumption. Depends the the run the other way. If more people are migrating into New no, Zealand, it's, it's, it's negative. Right. So it means more, mean more people are leaving. Oh, leaving. Not yeah. So yeah. we've got a decrease in economic force. activity, which would be yeah. AD and deflation <coughs> pressures almost. So it increases the um, spare capacity in our economy because we have less people in our potential in our labour force. Yeah, especially yeah. skilled labour going overseas. Yes, mm. which just means yeah. that there could be wage pressures, particularly if it's skilled labour leaving. Yeah. Remaining skilled workers could demand higher wages or they'll leave. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And also yeah. economic growth overall because of this spare capacity could give rise to a negative output gap almost. And we could again right. enter a double, double recession dip. without... Mm. I mean, if we look at the tenuous nature of the recovery at the moment, we can see that anything that detrimentally affects growth could again bring us back to a session. Yes. So you've got those deflationary pressures occurring mm -hmm. and also, <coughs> like say, Richard, your inflationary pressures. Yeah, I think that's a good point for the yeah. skilled labour because that's one of the big issues in New Zealand, that too many skilled labour are going overseas because yeah. Yeah, high wages. Yeah, university here and exactly. going overseas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so essentially the overall impact for the New Zealand economy with a net outflow of immigrants would be initially the fact that we would experience decreased economic activity as a consequence of decreased consumption, um, lower levels of production to facilitate a smaller population. Um, and given the tenuous nature of our recovery, this decrease in economic activity would give rise to deflationary um, pressures. And again, given the low inflation we're experiencing at the moment, could even stimulate a double dip recession and would lower the um, overall inflation level. But also we would have conflicting that the spare capacity that would exist in the economy given the loss of labour resources would give rise to the workers who are still in the country demanding higher wages for their services which would this wage pressure could give rise to almost a wage to inflationary pressures in that regard and which just obviously would conflict with the prices being and this would conflict greatly with the prices being commanded by producers obviously lower prices due to a lower um, the um, price has been compared because the producer will be earning um, relatively higher prices, will be commanding higher prices given the re in reduced consumption, but would also would thereby be having um, local workers wishing to seek higher wage claims. So you could end up with almost a wage price spiral situation emerging, combined with um, deflationary pressures. So potentially very detrimental for the economy overall if not properly managed. Okay. Um can you run through what the implications would be if one of the rating agencies, for example, Standard & Poor's or Moody's, uh, downgraded New Zealand's credit rating? Right. Well, you um, get higher <coughs> interest rates. Okay. If they would down, yeah. yeah. If they would downgrade yeah. us, that means we are higher risk. Yeah. yeah. So higher risk means higher interest. So that means we have to pay more um, debt servicing. The government has to pay more debt servicing. 
so that means less money is going into other sects of the of of uh, the government budget. Yeah, well, right. more so. The <coughs> people would find obviously New Zealand a high risk. We would have to offer higher interest rates in order to maintain the same inflow of investment funds. And given the nature of New Zealand's economy, we are dependent upon the inflow of investment incomes from overseas for investment of infrastructure, mm. for, as yeah. you say, public de public um, provision and such. Mm. So we would have to have higher interest rates, which obviously would transpose domestically to inflationary pressures. Right. Um, I think yeah. also, if we get downgraded, higher interest rates will also crowd out business investment, private investment, because mm. they too will have higher interest rates. And also, uh, <coughs> we would also lose the buffer to any economic shocks, our capacity yes. to yeah. respond to economic shocks it would is uh, more subdued because we are, um, uh, you know, more risky and can't assure the finance needed to mm. respond to them. So really, the, so really overall the stability and um, security we've established through our, cre our relatively high credit rate, I believe it's double A plus or something at the moment, sure. as well as the um, that security would be lost if we were downgraded due to loss of reputation mm. internationally. Yeah. Okay, good. Yes, okay. Do you want to you add any thoughts on what would happen to the exchange rate? Oh, yes, of course. Oh. Okay, um, high, if we have high interest in New Zealand, that would yeah. mean a high demand for the New Zealand dollar from overseas investors. And we would be attracted yeah. uh, from probably overseas investors. It, it's very relative on how <coughs> the degree to which interest rates would change and the willingness mm. of the interest rates to change to facilitate higher investment. Um, investment would likely, in, in the short term anyway, decrease as investors see New Zealand to be a more risky investment because it's unlikely interest rates would change immediately following the credit downgrade. So in the short run, we'll probably have a depreciation of the New Zealand dollar. Okay. Mm. Relative. Someone say. Uh, if we are downgraded, it would result in higher interest rates over the long term, the medium term. <coughs> uh, but in the short term, it's almost like a warning signal that New Zealand is now a riskier investment. And foreign investors who are uncomfortable with that will uh, remove their savings from New Zealand, which could lead to a depreciation of the New Zealand dollar. But over the medium term, higher interest rates, firstly, uh, would crowd out private investment because businesses, New Zealand firms, would also face higher uh, interest costs. The New Zealand government would have to spend more money on debt financing, which is an opportunity cost to spending in other areas. And finally, a higher interest rate and a more risky investment here in New Zealand means that if there is another <laughs> economic shock, we may not be able to guarantee the overseas finance to uh, respond to it effectively. Okay. Yeah, two minutes. Great. Um, so what would be the impact of a Greek default on New Zealand? Um, a Greek. Obviously. If Greece defaults. Yeah, obviously. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, obviously, I think if Greece were to default, it would send shockwaves throughout Europe initially. Yes. So yeah. you would yeah. not just expect Confidence Greece, yeah. you would have you general general instability within Europe as a whole. I mean, it could yeah. it could almost tip Europe over the edge because it's not going to take a lot as it stands at the moment. Mm. So we we would look. So Europe suddenly becomes seen as a risk investment. So providing yeah. New Zealand's able to maintain its credit rating in the meantime, so which sweet. would be plausible we would actually perhaps experience mm. increased investment in flows. Yeah, which would cause an appreciation. Be quite good, yeah. yeah. Mm. On the other hand, um, Europe is quite a large market and mm. of course Europe would, if, if European market would, for example, have mm. the Greece, if the Greek economy would default, then there would, a would be a huge confidence drop, consumers and businesses yeah. in Europe, yeah. which could then lead on to export and import throughout other nations, which then leads back yeah. to us. We're yeah. definitely, so, we're mm. definitely a price taker. In that yes. respect. Yeah. Yeah. I think so I, I think however the the level of in, the interest the appreciation of the dollar through interest um, the increase in investment in New Zealand which it is beneficial I think the increase in investment is certainly beneficial to New Zealand firms without us necessarily needing to raise interest rates in the process would be of greater benefit to New Zealand than the cost of 
potential export earnings because I'd anticipate the average Greek individual who buys a New Zealand good won't change their spending habits too much irrespective of the credit downgrade and we also have other markets we diversify into anyway as a buffer against a downfall in one market. Mm. But if Greece became bankrupt and it sent a shockwave throughout Europe, surely confidence here in New Zealand would be yeah, affected. Definitely. Yes. There would be yeah. lower <coughs> confidence and you could see lower investment as a result. Yeah, possibly. Really great ideas, guys. Could someone just bring them back together and give us a final answer? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can yeah, do it. Oh, oh, your catch. Uh, if <laughs> Greece good. were to default on its debts and, and go bankrupt, because it's part of a common currency and a com- common economic system, that economic system would be shocked as well, and it would look like a riskier investment, which means that New Zealand, with its relative stability, would become a more favourable uh, place to invest. So you would get an appreciation of the New Zealand dollars when, uh, because demand for New Zealand dollars will increase as investors looking for stability choose New Zealand. But also because Europe, the European Union is such a large trading block, New Zealand would be impacted by lower confidence here in New Zealand because we can't expect uh, continued the same sort of export and trade growth from Europe as we do now. So you could see lower investment domestically here in New Zealand as a result. Great. Thank you very much. And we're out of time, so you can all relax now. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you.